Hello everyone, so in today's video uh, we are going to be talking about a DIY isolation transformer, okay? So as you might know, uh, we're going to be doing, a, we are already doing a little series on um, designing and building a uh, high voltage uh, lab power supply and for us to uh, 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 create such high voltages and work with such high voltages in a safe manner uh, We need an isolation transformer and uh, I think it's uh, very important in a series like this to uh, discuss this and uh, Show to people that you don't have to pay uh, like exorbitant uh, amounts of money uh, To buy isolation transformers. Okay, you can build them yourself as long as you are doing so um for low power circuits, uh, it's very cheap, very affordable, and um, also very simple to do. Okay, so we're not going to be building a uh, um, uh, let's say a hundred watt isolation transformer or a three hundred watt isolation transformer for you to use on uh, uh, large amplifiers, tube amplifiers, and stuff like that. No, we are going to be building a small, very low current, low power isolation transformer just for us to play around with some uh, tubes or uh, uh, Nixie tubes and valves and stuff like that but also to power and uh, test our high voltage DC lab power supply okay uh, in order for us to uh, build this I'm going to use an existing project that I have this is it this was my uh, very old isolation transformer that I've built a uh, I'd know like around uh, five years ago five six years ago okay this is it i've shown it in the uh, uh project overview of the power supply which uh, you can check out by clicking in the card that i hope i remember to put right here um and in there i've showed the this thing inside and it's just uh horrible it's very crummy it's a uh, <laughs> it was a hack job i had to get this done because i really wanted to um uh, play around with uh, high voltages and that's what happens <laughs> so it's it's very horrible inside of this and uh, it's also made for 120 volts because that's what we had in Brazil and here in Europe I have 230 so I can't use this here I need to uh, uh, modify this and I hope I've left a uh, a tap on the transformer so that uh, I can modify this uh, more easily but hey we're going to be uh, talking about that in just a bit so I'm basically just going to be modifying this I'm going to be uh, replacing these uh, uh, th these binding posts here because th there is high voltage here and a uh, hey, just having exposed metal like this is not any good so I've ordered some um, of those uh, uh, inset binding posts so uh, it's going to be uh, just kind of like a, a, a multimeter. Of course, I went with the cheapest one available because, hey, this is just something that's uh, is going to be used around the lab and uh, no need to, to get anything fancy for this. So these are going to be the binding posts. I'm just going to put them in here. I hope I have space inside. And uh, also I'm going to fix the fuse situation. So there is a fuse inside of here, but it is just uh, horribly placed. It's completely wrong. And uh, I'm, I also bought this fuse holder so that uh, we can uh, access the fuse from the outside, okay? So uh, first, oh, also uh, uh, in the middle of the video, uh, we are going to be, uh, uh, I bought these uh, really nice high power resistors here. And uh, we are going to be uh, checking uh, the uh, current capabilities of using an isolation transformer like this, okay? And yeah, so it's going to be a, a very interesting video for sure, all right? So uh, first of all, let me just talk about uh, what's inside of here. And uh, uh, so then we can uh, proceed to doing some of the experiments and then later uh, uh, actually uh, improving this case and uh, upgrading everything that is inside of here. Okay, so uh, I'll see you in a bit. So before we dive into this, uh, let's talk about why we need an isolation transformer in the first place. Okay, um, sorry, uh, I've already uh, started this here. Uh, 
this is simple. Uh, I forgot to turn on my microphone, so I started drawing all this, uh, made a whole explanation, and then realized I recorded no audio. <laughs> so great, so bear with me while I <laughs> redo this whole segment. All right? Now, uh, where were they? okay, so <laughs> first things first, when you have your mains uh, uh, circuit in your house, you usually have three wires. You have your life, your neutral, and you have your mains earth. This mains earth is actually literally tied to the ground, okay, to, the, to actual earth. <laughs> and uh, that's this conductor here, which is also called a PE for protective earth. And that's all about it. it there is just no current passing through the, your earth uh, wire. But, well, theoretically, there shouldn't be any current passing through your earth wire here, because it is purely for safety, okay? Because you are also uh, Earth referenced, and the problem with that is that since this, uh, uh, these wires are also Earth referenced, that means that you are able to complete a circuit if you, for example, touch the neutral wire. Theoretically, nothing should happen if your uh, uh, house wiring is well balanced. There should be no voltage here at your neutral wire. But if you touch your live wire, in case of Europe, you get a 230 volt shock, which is quite a lot, and it's going to hurt. Uh, that that happens just because this, uh, these two wires, they are referenced to Earth as well as you are, because then you're just completing a circuit between this wire and the Earth wire. Okay. So uh, this is done. Uh, it, this is not done, this connection between uh, a neutral and earth is not done in your house, it's done at the, uh, at your, uh, at your post outside your house, okay? So you can't just uh, uh, un disconnect some sort of jumper in your house and have your house floating, that doesn't work. And uh, this is done for safety reasons, since uh, let's say you have uh, uh, an exposed bit of metal, uh, for example, your uh, computer case, okay? It's a uh, 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 an exposed bit of, bit, piece of metal, and that piece of metal should be uh, earthed. The reason for that is, let's say some fault, something bad occurs inside of your computer, and the live connection comes into contact with your, uh, uh, your chassis. What will happen is, if that's not earthed, then that, uh, all, all that exposed metal is going to be referenced to your live wire. So if you touch it, you're going to get a nasty shock as if you were if you touched any sort of live conductor in your house. So that should be earthed because as soon as that uh, uh, live wire touches that uh, metal surface, it's going to trip your circuit breaker because there will be a direct connection between life and earth. Okay? Also in the modern homes and here in Europe, uh, you have a, a special type of uh, um, uh, circuit breaker, GFI, there are a whole bunch of names for it, but it's basically just going to be a, a measuring leakage current between the, your live and your earth wire to uh, detect a shock. Let's say uh, you accidentally uh, touch one, a live wire, it's going to trip, even though it isn't a short, it's going to trip because it's going to detect that current is not flowing from live to neutral, so some current must be leaking to your earth, okay? So earth is always for safety. Now, uh, since we want isolation, you just want isolation because, hey, let's say uh, we used a, a buck converter, a DC-DC buck converter with just an inductor, uh, and we wanted 12 volts, and we just connected, just put a bridge rectifier here on the live and neutral, got a, a very high voltage here, and just had a buck converter to convert this to, to let's say, uh, it's going to be around like uh, 320 volts DC into 12 volts. Okay, then you get 12 volts, but the problem is those 12 volts are still referenced to Earth. So, in that case, it's a very small uh, voltage, so you're not going to get any shocks. But if you, let's say, have a 50 volts, now there is a shock hazard there, because that circuit is referenced to Earth. And we don't want that. <laughs> we almost never want that sort of stuff, so you need isolation. So what happens is, we put transformers. 
Uh, transformers can be uh, for linear supplies, for 60 hertz or 50 hertz, which make them very big. Or they can be for switch mode supplies, as you see absolutely everywhere. And those can be smaller because of the uh, higher switching current. Oh, sorry, not switching current, switching uh, frequency. So this is how a transformer looks. Uh, you have your primary side. Let me just uh, write this down. So you have your uh, primary and you have your secondary. Now, uh, you can act your, in your primary, usually, uh, your life and neutral like this. So you have uh, 230 volts here at this side. And let's say, uh, uh, we want to have a uh, 12 volts here, so we'll get a uh, 12 volts here on the output. You purchase the uh, uh, 230 volt to uh, 12 volt transformer. And uh, this is fine because uh, as you can see here, just by the symbol of this transformer, we have a uh, earth reference circuit right here because uh, we have that uh, earth connection. And on this other side, it is completely floating. There is no reference to earth on this side. This is basically just two inductors very closely coupled together. Of course, in the real world, uh, this is not how uh, things are. You always have uh, some parasitic capacitance and resistance everywhere. But uh, that's out of the scope of this video. But uh, just keep that in mind. And in some cases, you actually want to have some capacitance between the primary and the secondary. You'll see this in uh, almost every... Um, double insulated device uh, for example one that's very common are your uh, typical um, power supplies 5 volt power supplies usb chargers for mobile phones you usually have a capacitor here between your uh, neutral of course uh, you don't know which one's going to be uh, live or neutral when you plug it into the uh, to the wall but all you want is a, uh, uh, an earth reference in that case so basically you have a capacitor here between your primary and your secondary of your um, uh, transformer you still have isolation because it's a capacitor there's no direct connection between the two sides but uh, that gives you a path back to mains earth for any noise that's going to be induced here on the secondary okay that's done for EMI purposes and for uh, um, uh, passing uh, um, EMI tests and the FCC and stuff like that. Okay, so let's not worry about that in here. Now, you have your 12 volts here completely isolated. This, this part of the circuit, you can touch any one of these wires, you can touch them together. No worries, uh, it's completely isolated from here. What you got to remember is, as soon as you touch one of these wires, you're going to make this part, or referenced, of course, the, the resistance and capacitance of your body is not very big, it's not very low, so it's not going to be a direct uh, path to mains earth, but you got to remember that, okay? If we had, for example, 230 volts here, uh, this would have been a, a, a shock hazard because as soon as you touched one side of this transformer, you would make this circuit uh, earth referenced. And when you touch the other side, then hey, you're going to get a very serious shock there as, as if you had touched uh, this, these two conductors here. Same thing, okay? So you've got to keep that in mind. Oh, by the way, just uh, getting this out of the way as soon as possible. Uh, if you decide to follow along and build this stuff and work with high voltages, you're doing so at your own risk. Uh, this stuff is very dangerous. And uh, you, if you're not comfortable around high voltages, you should never try to build something like this. And you should uh, first get uh, accustomed to uh, higher voltages. Uh, and know the dangers and uh, be prepared to work with something like this so that you don't shock yourself and uh, there's always a, a, a death risk when you're <laughs> doing stuff like this okay so just keep that in mind right now uh, so this is completely isolated but we still have uh, to be careful because we can uh, reference this as soon as you touch it there you have a, a, a reference and when you touch on the other side then you got a, a closed circuit and current will start to flow through your body okay 
you want to know more about uh, safety and stuff like that, hey, there are countless videos on YouTube. There are a whole bunch of articles that you can read about stuff like this, okay? Now, we have this 12 volts here, but in our case, we don't want 12 volts. We want a, a perfect isolation transform. This is an isolation transform because, hey, we have, you have an isolated supply here. But it's not actually what we want. We want to have uh, uh, the 230 volts from our outlet be isolated. So we want uh, a primary of 230 volts and we want our secondary of 230 volts. Those transformers exist, of course they exist, but they are extremely expensive. And that's why we're going to be building one ourselves to make it cheaper and more accessible. Because hey, <laughs> when I was in Brazil, you just couldn't get a, uh, in that case, a, a uh, 120 to 120 volt transformer. They were just on obtainium. And if you wanted to get one, you had to make them custom and it was extremely expensive, <laughs> okay? So we want to do this ourselves to make it possible for everyone to have access to a uh, extremely uh, important piece of safety gear in the lab, all right? Now, one way to accomplish this is very simple. So transformers can be hooked backwards. There is no, nothing says that you should have a, um, uh, 230 volts on one side and uh, 12 on the other, okay? If you, for example, if you had, uh, um, let's just ignore this part, um, and let's say you had uh, uh, some uh, 12 volts AC source uh, coming from a, I don't know, a motor or something like that, an alternator for a car, and you connected it to these terminals, you're actually going to get uh, 230 volts here in the primary, which will become a secondary in this case, okay? And it's going to be completely uh, isolated from this side of the circuit. So um, transformers are bidirectional devices by their nature, okay? So if nothing is stopping us from reverting this, of course, we can revert this. And uh, if you plug 230 volts here, you're going to get to some extremely, extremely high voltages here on the side. Okay. Uh, um, let's say in the order of uh, 20 times uh, your line voltage here. So well into the kilovolts. So never do that. Be very careful before attempting something like this. Okay. Because you can generate some pretty high voltages. Now, so... If we can put any sort of uh, input here on the a transformer, what we can do is we can just grab a second transformer like this with a matching secondary. That's very important. Of 12 volts. And hook them up like this, back to back. And now, when you do this, what happens is you get 230 volts here. There's nothing <laughs> saying that you are not able to do this. This is perfectly fine. So what you've built here, and this is going to be a, the primary of the secondary transformer, So basically, you have two transformers back to back. So you have uh, 230 volts in. You have isolated 12 volts out, which is going to have to be input for a second transformer with, with that uh, 12 volts output. And you will get 230 volts out. So 230 volts in, 230 out. Of course, this is ideal situation. So basically the exact same amount of current of power that you get in the first transformer, you get in the second and also voltages, but that's not true. You always have transformer losses. So uh, here you will have, um, you have some drop here and then you have some drop here on your second transformer. So this second transformer, it's not going to give you 230 out. It's going to give you a bit less. Also, there will be a drop in current, and uh, that's what I'm most uh, interested about. What I want, what I, what I actually want to uh, measure, is uh, how much power 
we are going to be losing by doing this okay so that you can uh, uh, if you have a circuit that consumes uh, 20 watts uh, what kind of tr isolation transformer you have to build to be able to supply that 20 watts you can't buy just a 20 watt transformer because of the losses especially because you're going to be uh, uh, putting them back to back so the losses are going to be uh, uh, amplified so we will need to uh, determine a, a sort of a margin uh, uh, to know uh, what kind of transformer that we need to use to power that load and that's very important that's something that i have not seen anywhere on the internet someone doing this sort of experiments okay and uh, you're going to be doing this here today so also you can reference this node right here you can just uh, put the uh, connect ground to here okay that's not a, a problem because this is going to be isolated from here so yeah now what we've built here is basically just this we have a transformer where we have 230 volts in and 230 volts out and uh, this goes to live this goes to neutral and these are completely isolated from each other okay so that's the principle of an isolation transformer all right let me just write this here so this is going to be the primary this is the secondary all right so this is your isolation transformer and this is exactly what we have inside of here now i'm going to be uh, turning this down on once again we're going to look at it how horrible it was and uh, how crappy i did a job here in 2014 i guess so hey, be prepared for some really uh, sketchy stuff. <laughs> but uh, we'll be seeing exactly this. Uh, in this case of this, I remember that uh, it was a center tap transformer. So there will be a, a center tap being connected here. Okay, so no worries. Same stuff there. So just connect the two together. Nothing difficult about that. So we are going to be doing some experiments. I'm not going to be uh, uh, improving it. First, I'm going to uh, convert this to 230 volts. Otherwise, we're going to get <laughs> uh, quite high voltages here in the output. And uh, what I want is convert this first to 30. Then we're going to do some experiments with the uh, resistors. We're going to be loading this transformer down. We're both going to be loading uh, this part of the transformer with them separate. So that we know exactly uh, uh, how much current this transformer is able to uh, give us and then we're going to connect them in series back to back like this and then we're going to be starting to load uh, this other side of the transformer to see how much of a loss we get there all right so uh let me uh, open this up and i'll see you in a bit So as you can see, it's quite a mess inside of here. Uh, as I've said in the previous video, I have no clue what I did here, why I used hot glue, why there are no uh, uh, <laughs> no uh, uh, fasteners on this thing. It's a, a literal mess, okay? So let me just uh, try to remove these things because you see this crummy old hot glue, it just disintegrated over time and it's not holding anything in place oh it is actually holding this thing in place you also had this uh, uh, fuse in the wrong part of the circuit because it is here in the secondary and it should be in the primary but uh, we are going to be uh, getting rid of this fuse so uh, that's not a problem this is really this is holding up quite well Is free. Hot glue is okay. Great. So hot glue is out. Just have to uh, uh, tidy this up a bit. So this right here is all the crap hot glue that I've used for no reason whatsoever. I don't know what I was thinking back then, but hey, again, I told you I had to uh, make this thing really quick. 
Now, as you can clearly see here, the two secondaries, let me just, uh, oh, wait, actually crossed them. Nice. So uh, the two secondaries of this transformer are uh, wired back to back. Uh, this is a, a, a kind of important just to make sure since we have a center tap transformer, I've connected the two center taps and uh, I've crossed the uh, one of the wires. So uh, we have a center tap here and the wires go crossing like this. Okay, that's just to ensure the uh, phase of the wave is uh, uh, the same between the two transformers, the two secondaries, all right? Now, this fuse is right here between these two uh, secondaries. This will have to go. So let's start with that. So no need for this fuse right here, since we're going to be replacing it with a nice fuse holder. And uh, not only that, but uh, it's also in the wrong place. We need to put it here in this primary, and that's what we are going to be doing. So let's also just detach these two transformers. All right, so done. Now we have our uh, secondary transformer here, which goes to our outputs. And we have our primary transformer, so like this. And the good thing is that this transformer, it has a, a tap for uh, 230 volts right here. So that's nice, very thoughtful of them, very thoughtful of me and back in uh, 2014 to uh, actually buy a transformer that had two taps. Uh, so it's going to be a very simple conversion. So here you can see at the input, uh, I just have a, this wire coming to this terminal right here. I'll have to uh, cut this wire off and uh, solder this into place. Okay, now we have also earth is just a, a, a completely shrouded here because hey, we don't need earth in this circuit. So that's nice. So yeah. Um, I'm just going to do this uh, uh, modification here um, so that uh, we can power it from the supply here in Europe. And then we're going to start doing some experiments first with just uh, this uh, transformer right here using some uh, low value resistors to load the circuit up. I'm not going to be loading it. I could have used my uh, uh, DC load, but I won't do that because uh, when you, I'll have to uh, rectify this and then we're not going to be seeing actually uh, the transformer. We're actually going to be seeing just the uh, combination of the transformer, the rectifier and the capacitors. That's why I'm going to be using resistors so that we can actually characterize this transformer alone. And later I'm going to reconnect these two transformers in this topology and then we are going to start loading the outputs right here and see uh, what we get there. Okay, so uh, let me uh, rearrange things, let me uh, do this modification and I'll see you in a bit. So let's begin with the experimentation part. I've already uh, wired this up for uh, 230 volts. So here's the uh, uh, 120 volt tap. It's uh, just uh, shrouded with uh, some heat shrink. Okay. Uh, I know this looks sketchy, but hey, it, we're just doing some experiments right now, so I don't mind. Later up, I'm going to uh, uh, tidy this all up. I'm going to put the uh, the fuse holder and stuff like that. So let's not worry about this right now. Okay. So uh, what I'm doing is I have the uh, the second transformer. It's completely out of the circuit. All I have here is the primary transformer. Uh, I'm leaving the center tap disconnected. I think I'm going to to uh, leave it disconnected in the final uh, iteration of this as well. Uh, so basically, uh, what we are doing here, we are just uh, measuring the output of the two taps. So we won't have uh, 12 volts. We are going to have uh, 24 volts at the output. Uh, it's going into these two resistors here. These are 24 ohms, uh, 15 watt resistors. And uh, I know this is uh, overloading it uh, quite a bit. 
uh, just a little bit, but hey, uh, don't mind that because uh, I'm going to be putting them in series. So uh, this multimeter right here, the Fluke, it's going to be measuring the uh, voltage here at the uh, input of this, these resistors and the uh, 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 21GW multimeter is going to be measuring the current flowing uh, between the two. Okay, so I'm going to be measuring the current uh, in these two thermals. Um, so um, let's do this. So let me connect this right here. So first of all, let me uh, let me plug this in. So here we go. So it's plugged in, and with uh, no load at all, we are getting uh, around yeah around 24 volts AC. Nice. Now let's uh, plug this in. And as soon as we plug it in, uh, we're overloading it just a tiny bit, but uh, we see that the voltage has dropped to 18.6, and our current is uh, hovering around uh, um, uh, 390 millivolts, yeah, uh, milliamps. So let's uh, do some uh, some calculations here. So if we have uh, 18.5 volts at uh, Let's say 0 0.385 milliamps uh, this time. So we get around a, we're having around a, a 7.1 VA. Here we can uh, uh, use the terms interchangeably, both VA and watts, um, because uh, this is a purely resistive load. So yeah, uh, this uh, little transformer, it's rated at uh, 6 watts 60 yay so uh hey it's a uh, it's a delivery uh quite uh, uh more power than it's supposed to that's really good uh if i put my hand over it it's just uh it's not it's not hot at all it's not even warm this is just cold it's just mildly you can tell that uh, it has power applied to it because uh you can feel that it's not at ambient temperature, but that's it. Uh, it's not overloading this transformer at all. So yeah, so this is good. <laughs> These resistors, they are they are getting pretty hot. So that's nice. So we know that we can extract uh, with one transformer like this. Of course, we're overloading a little, uh, little bit, but we can extract uh, around uh, seven to six watts out of it. So the ratings here, they are pretty conservative. That's great. So uh, this transformer works. Now let's uh, uh, wire up uh, the second transformer in circuit. Let's uh, already uh, I'll already just uh, tidy this all up, and uh, in the next shot I'll probably just have this already all uh, buttoned up and ready to go. And then we are going to be uh, testing actually the uh, uh, secondary output with the uh, uh, 230 volts. All right. So uh, let me uh, rearrange stuff here. Let me uh, button all this thing up, make it pretty, and I'll see you in a bit. All right. So I just finished <laughs> upgrading this and uh, making all the modifications that I wanted. So uh, now the transformers are uh, securely bolted into place. So no more hot glue. <laughs> I've added a fuse holder right here on the side. So that's all great. Uh, it's a bit tight in here. Hey, <laughs> what you gonna do? It's a very tiny enclosure and the transformers are rather large. So I've uh, zip tied everything so it looks a lot neater. Not that the uh, rat's nest that it was before. So as you can see here, I have uh, disconnected the uh, the center taps so basically what we have here is a, a 24 volt secondaries connected in series like this and here are the outputs and i have added the uh nice uh biting posts here they are a lot safer so let me just uh zoom in here so, you can see how this is. so there we go so, there it is it's all very uh nice 
tidy. So now it's just a matter of uh, closing this thing up. There we go. Close up very nicely. And hey, applying some uh, mains here and checking the output. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Let me just uh, uh, screw this in. It's already looking a lot better. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's very nice. Uh, I really enjoy the way it looks right now. Even with this uh, little nub in here, it looks quite jelly. I still have to put a, a label here, labeling it at a 330 volt input. At 230 volt input, sorry. Uh, I misplaced my uh, um, silicone rubber feed kit. So I'll, I'll need to. Uh, track that down here in the lab and put some feet onto this because otherwise this is just going to scratch up absolutely everything here with this these uh, metal uh, um, posts here so yeah hey this looks really really nice so there it is there's the mains input fuse holder and hey that's the Outputs that looks great. So now let me uh, Put a, a fuse in here uh, Put some power and test this out So now that uh, everything is ready I have uh, Screwed everything back in and I've uh, um, Rearranged the bench so that we can test the uh, high voltage side with some uh, low resistors. Okay So it's already plugged in uh, what I have here is a, a good assortment of uh, um, 4.7K, 10K, 3.3K, and another 10K. Okay, so oh, I don't need this thing right here. Let me, let me remove it. So we are going to be starting with the 10K, then we are going for the 4.7, then the 3.3. Now, uh, it's already set up in this multimeter. You're going to be seeing the uh, current flowing through the resistor and this is going to be measuring the voltage so first of all let's just do some uh, um, quick measurements so in the 120 volt tap we're getting around uh, 100.2 volts so that's a uh, uh, pretty disappointing so we're losing quite a bit already we have some loss and in the uh, 240 volt tap we're 230 in this case we're only getting 200 so at least they are symmetrical. So uh, yeah, this is not the best setup already. Uh, you can clearly see that you you don't have an ideal transformer here. You don't get a 230 in, 230 out. I've already measured the uh, input. It's at uh, uh, 231. So yeah, okay. <laughs> That's already a bit of a bummer, but hey. So now let's start by uh, measuring it under load. So. Let me uh, hook up the 10K resistor here. So let's start with the uh, 120 volt tap, which it was at only 100. So the voltage drops just a bit, but uh, let's calculate that. So we have, um, let's say 98 volts at uh, 0, 0.0. 097 milliamps so we get almost uh, one watt out of this okay so now let's go to the uh, 230 which is at a, let's say just a 200 volt tap so there the the voltage drops quite a bit so let's calculate this so we have a 170 times 0 0.017 and we get uh, almost um, 3 watts okay so let me uh, now change this resistor 
Let's go for the uh, 4.7k. There we go. Now, let's plug it into the 100 volt tap. Again, uh, negligible voltage drop in that tap. And now we have, um, let's say, 92 volts by 0, 0.0. Let's, let's go for 20 milliamps, okay? So we get uh, almost uh, 2 watts. All right, now for the 200 volt tap. Now the voltage drop is quite significant. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. So um, 100 and let's say 144 times, uh, let's say 31. Now we are starting to get somewhere. It's uh, around uh, uh, 4.5 watts, but with uh, quite a major voltage drop. So, yeah. So now let's uh, change this for a, uh, the 3.3K. So for a 100 volt tap with the 3.3. Now the uh, voltage drop there is uh, starting to get significant. So let's go for 88 volts times uh, 27 milliamps. So we get the uh, 2.4 watts out of that. Now let's go for the uh, 200 volt tap. And now the voltage is, drop is just insane. It's horrible. That's really bad. Basically it's unusable at that point. Unless you are doing something uh, where you are um, trying to simulate a 120 volt uh, main supply, but hey, that's really bad. Because we, we really want the uh, 230 volt out. But at this point, let's say 127 times, uh, uh, let's give it uh, 39 milliamps. Now that's uh, basically 5 watts, and at that point you're basically at the <laughs> limit of the transformer, which is just a 6 watt tiny little thing. So uh, with transformers this small, uh, let me just disconnect this. So yeah, with transformers this small, uh, hey, you're going to get a, a quite a, a significant voltage drop right off the bat. And as you start putting any sort of a load onto it, it just drops dramatically. But uh, that was already expect. I didn't expect that much of a voltage drop. But uh, I just wanted to explain you this sort of stuff, how you can build this yourself. Uh, so, and I just wanted to uh, use something that I already had for this. So that's the reason why I chose this. When I was using this, it was just for Nixie tubes and stuff like that. So I really didn't care much about the current or the voltage drop. Because those usually operate at a 90 volts thereabouts. So it wasn't really a concern. But if you're going to be a powering uh, a power supply or something like that, that requires uh, a higher load, hey, something like this, this small is not suitable. Uh, usually, when you're doing, let's say, a uh, vacuum tube uh, stuff, where you are building an amplifier, or something like that, you can get away with this, and you just specify quite a, a big transformer here, let's say a uh, 24 watt or 30 watt transformer, and then what you do is you basically just um, tap the secondary, empower your filaments for the heater. Uh, and then you also have a high voltage here and then you are good to go there. So uh, you usually already use a, quite a beefy transformer here. Of course you're loading this up by uh, connecting the filaments, but then you just have to uh, give it some margin in the, <laughs> so that uh, you get quite a good voltage here on this uh, secondary, okay? 
But uh, yeah, so if you're going to be building an isolation transformer like this for uh, powering the power supply we're going to be uh, uh, building here, hey, I don't uh, recommend something like a 6 watt like this. I recommend you to go for, uh, let's say, uh, something like a, a 30 watt or a 50 watt transformer. Okay, so two 50 watt transformers, that's going to give you uh, enough uh, uh, voltage and current out to power that okay so yeah so that was it so uh, this is very simple stuff stuff that you can build yourself and it is uh, quite an important piece of a safety gear to have in the lab so, yeah it was a simple one uh, quite disappointing because of the uh, rating but that was expected already hey so hope you've enjoyed this one uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions please leave them in the comments below and I hope to see you in the next video Bye.